Hello everybody. So today we're going to start our discussion of fractions and we're on lesson 6.1 page 253 of the fifth grade gold math textbook. And so by the end of this lesson you should be able to answer the question how can you use models to add fractions that have different denominators. So today we're going to be working on just modeling using fraction strips. Okay. So we're going to work our way towards um, more of an abstract uh, concept in later lessons. So today is more of a concrete and using fraction strips to show how we can use um, different size fraction strips to find common denominators. So let's look at the investigate. Hillary is making a tote bag for her friend. She uses one and a half yard of blue fabric and one half yard of red fabric. How much fabric does Hillary use? Well, let's use one hole as a as a um, measure of one hole. Okay. And now we're going to find one half plus one fourth. So we can notice just by the um, by comparing the size of the fraction strips that our sum is going to be less than one whole. Well, now I don't know what fraction to name this because I'm having one half plus one fourth. So we need to find smaller fraction strips or equivalent fraction strips to represent one half plus one fourth. All right, so find a fraction strip with all the same denominator, with the same denominator that are equivalent to one half and one fourth, and that fit exactly under the sum of one fourth plus one half, and record the add ins. So basically, what we're saying is let's say we're going to try thirds. Okay, one thirds, two thirds, three thirds. Well, three thirds is equal to one whole. And you notice that it doesn't fit equivalently under one half plus one fourth. So the common denominator of two and four cannot be three. Now I'm thinking that because it's two and four, a common denominator has to be even. So let me try fourths. Okay, well that looks like that could possibly work, right? Because two one fourths is equal to one half. And we know that we already have one fourth, so let's just place another one fourth there. So one half plus one fourth is one, two, three fourths. So one half is the same as two fourths plus one fourth. So two fourths plus one fourth gives us three-fourths. So she uses three-fourths yard of fabric. <clears throat> so how would you determine what fraction strips, all with the same denominator, would fit exactly under one-half and one-third? So this time we'd start with one-half and we're going to add one-third. We well, already showed that one-third cannot equal one half, right? It's bigger than one half if I put two, two, two one thirds. I do know that two one fourths is equal to one half, but one fourth is going to be too short. So I guess it's not fourths. So I just keep trying smaller tiles until we get something that is equivalent. So if I try fifths, that's going to be a problem because I can't get any of the fifths to to match with half. So four fifths is too short and five fifths would be equal to one, so that's too many. So like denominator again is not fifths. Let's try sixths. Okay. 
Well, that's a good possibility right there, right? Because the sixths, three six matches one half. And two sixths matches one third. So what what are they? Five one sixth strips. And how did I determine that? Well, I kept trying different fraction strips. until I found okay and again it was five one-sixth strips So one half plus one third is actually five sixths. All right, so now let's look at number two. Explain the difference between finding fraction strips with the same denominator for one half and one thirds and one half and one fourth. Well, for one half plus one third, the one sixth fraction strips worked. Fraction strips that fit. Okay, so one half and one third. We said that one sixth worked. Well, <clears throat> we noticed that when we had one half plus one third, the fraction strips that wound up working weren't either of the denominators of the given problem. Okay, so we're, we're changing both denominators. We'd have to change this halves to sixths, and we'd have to change the thirds to sixths. But when we did one half plus uh, one fourth, the one fourth fraction strips matched, right? Okay, so when we added one half plus one fourth, we wound up having three one fourth strips. So the one fourth strips that worked matched one of the given denominators, four. So in that case, we only had to change, we would have only had to change one half into equivalent fractions of fourths. Okay, we wouldn't have had to change the one fourth. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at page 254. All right, so <clears throat> sometimes the sum of two fractions is greater than one. When adding fractions with unlike denominators, you can use the one whole strip to help determine if the sum is greater than one or less than one. So for instance, so we're gonna have this one whole, right? And it wants us to add three fifths and one half. So
Okay, so when we look at three-fifths plus one-half, we see that, that that sum, the sum of these fractions is greater than the one whole fraction strip. So we know that when we add three-fifths and two three-fifths and one-half, our fraction has to be greater than one-half, I mean greater than one whole. So place three one-fifth strips under the whole strip, which we did, and place one-half strip. Now step two, we need to find fraction strips with all the same denominator that e are equivalent to three-fifths and one-half. Okay, well, I know that <clears throat> using fifths, there's no way to get one-half. Because half of a fifth would be two and a half. Okay, it would have to. It would take two and a half fifths, but the, you, you, we can't cut the fifths in half as a fraction strip. So it's not fifths. I know fourths can be halves, but can I have two fourths equal the three fifths? No. Because look at when I put all four together. That's a, that's less than one whole. So it's not fourths. So let me think of fives. If I was going to skip count by fives, five, ten. I wonder if tenths will work. Let's try that. Let's try tenths. Okay, so six tenths is matching the three fifths. And how many tenths will equal one half? So one, two, three, four, and a fifth one. So five tenths. So we can add six tenths plus five tenths, six tenths plus five tenths. Which would give us 11 tenths. That's greater than one whole, so we can divide. And we'd be left with the remainder of one. The remainder can be the numerator of the fraction, and the, the divisor is the denominator of the problem. So 1 and 1 tenths is the same as 11 tenths. All right, let's look at our next problem. So <clears throat> in number 1, it says use fraction strips to find the sum of 1 half plus 3 eighths. 1 half plus 3 eighths. So let's put our, our half there, and now let's grab 3 eighths. Now, <clears throat> again, I, I'm sh sure fourths will equal a half. Two fourths equals a half. I know that. But is one fourth equal to 3 eighths? No. So it's not fourths. I know sixths are equivalent to one half. Three sixths, half of six is three, is two sixths equal to eight? I mean equal to three eighths? No, they don't exactly match up, do they? It's got to fit exactly to be, to be used as a like denominator. So you notice that it can't just work for one of the fractions. It have to have to work for both of the denominators. Well, how about eighths? Oh, well, four eighths is half, right? 
That makes sense. Plus the three we already had. So we didn't have to change the eighths. So we can change one half to four eighths. Change one half to four eighths and use the three eighths that we already have. So four eighths plus three eighths is seven eighths. All right, let's try one fifth. One half plus two fifths. One half plus two fifths. Well, the only fraction strip I have that when I count by fives would work it would be the tenths because I have halves, but when I skip count by fives, I don't say two. I have fourths, but again, I don't say, I wouldn't say four if I'm counting by fives. Six, no, five, 10, right? So I can't use the eighths, I can't use the twelfths. The only one open is the tenths. So we know that half of 10 is five. So the five tenths is equal to one half. And how many fifths, how many tenths will it take to equal one fifth, uh, three, two fifths? It looks like four tenths. Four tenths is equal to two fifths and five tenths is equal to one half. So on our problem, our equivalent fraction for one half is five tenths. An equivalent fraction for two fifths was four tenths. So we look underneath the two fifths and we have one, two, three, four fraction strips that are one tenth in size. So we just add that up and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tenths. Five plus four is nine. Nine tenths. Okay, number three. We're going to have three eighths plus a fourth. Three eighths plus one fourth. Okay, so here's our hold. And let's put three eighths. We know that's less than half, right? Because half of eight would be four plus a fourth. So we have unlike denominators, we have eighths and fourths. So we need to find something that would work one fraction strip that will work for all of this when we're adding. Now I'm thinking one fourth. Four can become eight, right? I'm thinking the eights might work. Yeah, two eighths fit exactly under one fourth. So we wouldn't have to change the eighths. So we can leave three, eight, uh, three eighths as three eighths, and we're going to change the fourths into one, two eighths. So three eighths plus two eighths is five eighths. All right, number four, three fourths plus one third. Three fourths plus one third. Well, I noticed that that one is greater than one whole. So when we put those together, it extends past one whole. So our fraction for number four will be, our sum will be greater than one whole. So four and threes, hmm. Three can't become four. So when I say three can't become four, when I'm skip counting, I go three, six, nine, 12, so on, right? And when I skip count by fours, I don't say three. 
So I can't use either one of those. It just won't work. Okay. And we can prove that by putting one fourths. And let's move this one just for a second, just to compare to one third. See, there's no way to get fourths to match thirds. So now if I skip count fours, four, eight, 12. You know, I said 12s when I counted by threes and by four. Let's try the 12 strips. Well, that was looking pretty good already because three twelfths equals one fourth. So let's put another three twelfths. All right, so we're at six twelfths and that equals two fourths. Let's take three more. So we've got all of the fourths matched up with twelfths. So three fourths is the same as three, six, nine twelfths. And one third. Well, how many twelfths would equal one twelfth? Two, three, four twelfths. Four twelfths is the same as one third. So Let's see, one third is equivalent to four twelfths, and three fourths was equivalent to nine twelfths. So nine plus four, we have 13 twelfths. Well, we can divide to turn that back into a mixed number. So 13 divided by 12 is one, subtract we're left with one. So one and one twelfth. So 13 twelfths or 1 and 1 twelfth. All right, number 5. <clears throat> Use fraction strips to find the sum. Write your answer in simplest form. 2 fifths plus 3 tenths. 2 fifths and 3 tenths. Okay, there's our 2 fifths. And we now have to add 3 tenths. Okay, well, there's not going to be a way for me to make – when I count by tens, I don't say fives. 10, 20, 30, right? But when I count by fives, I do say 10, right? So is, is it possible that our common denominator is one-fifth? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's try it. So one fifth plus one fifth. Okay, so two fifths does not equal three tenths. So that's not right. So what else could we try? Let's try tenths. Oh, so two fifths is the same as four tenths. So our common denominator is going to be tenths. So two fifths is the same as one, two, three, four tenths. Four tenths plus three tenths is seven tenths. Okay. One fourth and one twelfth. One fourth. plus one twelfth. Well, let's look at one fourth. When I skip count by fours, do I ever say 12? Four, eight, 12. Yeah, so 12 should work. So I should be able to put 12s here without having to change the other 12. So three twelfths is the same as one fourth. I don't need to change the other 12 because it's it already is a 12. So 3 twelfths plus 1 twelfth is 4 twelfths. 
Well, 4 twelfths is also equal to 1 third. So we could have used, well, we couldn't have used three because that wouldn't be a common denominator, but we can reduce. A common factor of four and 12 is four. So four divided by four is one and 12 divided by four is three. So four twelfths or one third. All right, we have one half. plus three-tenths. Okay, well, if I'm counting by twos, I say ten, right? I go two, four, six, eight, ten. So why don't I just make the halves into tenths? How many tenths does it take to equal one-half? Well, it should be five, because half of ten is five. One, two, three, four, five. So one half is the same as five tenths. The three tenths will just keep. And so five tenths plus three tenths is eight tenths. Now those are both even numbers, right? So we should know that they can both be divided by two. Eight divided by two is four. And ten divided by two is five. So four fifths should match. And it does. Okay. So seven tenths would end here and four fifths ends here. I'm sorry, eight tenths ends here. Eight tenths and four fifths ends here. So eight tenths or four fifths. All right. Two thirds plus one-sixth. Well, if I look at the one-thirds, if I was skip counting thirds, in other words, finding an equivalent fraction, right, to thirds, three-sixths, well, couldn't I replace the one-thirds with sixths? So let's see how many sixths it would take. One, two sixths is equal to one third. All right, so, yep. <clears throat> so the one third, I'm sorry, the two thirds is the same as four sixths. We didn't have to change the other sixth because the denominators are the same. 4 6 plus 1 6 is 5 6. 5 is a prime number, so they're, it's in simplest form. All right, 5 eighths and 1 fourth. <clears throat> Five eighths plus a fourth. All right, so that's slightly less than one whole. Now let's focus on this fourth. When you skip count by fours, do they become eights? Four, four times two is eight. Sure they do. So how many fourths, or how many eighths equals a fourth? Two eighths. So let's just change the one-fourth to an equivalent fraction of two-eighths. We don't need to change the five-eighths because its denominator was already eight. So how many eighths do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which makes sense. Five plus two is seven. Seven-eighths. All right, now we have one-half plus one-fifth. One-half plus one-fifth. All right, if we focus on the two, when I count by twos, I go two, four, six, eight, ten. I never said five. So I'm going to have to change both of these denominators. 
uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, it's going to be tenths, right? Because five, I, I say tenths on that. So one fifth is the same as two tenths. And one half is going to be the same as five tenths. So one half plus one fifth. One half is equivalent to five tenths, and one fifth is equivalent to two tenths. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths. Seven is a prime number, it is not a factor of ten, so that's in simplest form. All right, let's move on to the next one, number 11. Explain how using fraction strips with like denominators makes it possible to add fractions with unlike denominators. Well, so <clears throat> the fraction strips used to model the add-ins, they need to be the same, same size. So I can combine them and write the sum with the common denominator. Okay. So the fraction strips used Okay, so here, one half and one fifth, though they're not the same size, right? So, but when we turn them into tenths, all the fraction strips are the same size, which makes it easier to, to add the, the fraction strips. So once they're all the same size, I can combine them. So let's look at that. The fraction strips used to model the add-ins, like for instance, one half plus one fifth, they need to be the same size. Once we made them the same size, tenths in this case, I can add them and write the sum with the same denominator. Okay. When there's one fifth and one half, I can't write, it wouldn't be accurate to write this answer in fifths and it wouldn't be accurate to write it in halves either. So we had to find a common denominator. Number 12. <clears throat> Lewis is making two batches of muffins for a school picket, picnic. One batch of muffin uses one fourth cup of oats and one third cup of flour. How much oats and flour does Lewis need for two batches? And explain how you use fraction strips to solve the problem. So we have one fourth plus one third. So right now, fourths, one fourth plus one third, we don't have common denominators. So let's find something that's going to have the same size. And let's look at the three. If I make a multiple of three or skip count by threes, I go three, six, nine, twelve, and that's the, the uh, smallest size fraction I have, twelfths. So let's try fourths. Four, eight, twelve. So twelves work. I did say twelve on both of them. So how many twelfths? Well, one fourth is the same as three twelfths. And one third is the same as four twelfths. 
So four twelfths plus three twelfths is four twelfths plus three twelfths is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven twelfths. But it says he needs for two batches. Okay, well, if he needs seven twelfths for one, isn't he going to need the same amount again? So he's going to need seven twelfths plus seven twelfths equals fourteen twelfths. Well, 14 divided by 12 would leave me 1 and 2 twelfths. 2 can be divided by 2. 12 can be divided by 2. So 1 and 1 sixth, which equals 1 and 1 sixth. Oats and flour. One and one sixth cup of oats and flour. Explain how you use fraction strips to solve the problem. All right, so we said one third. One third was equivalent to four twelfths, and one fourth was equal to three twelfths. So when we added that, to get seven twelfths. Then add the second batch to get 14 twelfths or 1 and 1 sixth. All right, let's move on to 13. Maya makes trail mix by combining a third cup of mixed nuts a fourth cup of dried fruit and a sixth cup of chocolate morsels. What is the total amount of ingredients in her trail mix? Well, let's compare that to one whole. So we're, we're less than one, one whole, right? We're less than one full cup. So we now need to find an equivalent fraction for all three of these, three, four, and six. Hmm. When I count by threes, I do say six, but I don't say four. Hmm. Three, six, nine. Well, when I count by sixes, I don't say nine. Let's start, maybe start here. Six, twelve. Do I say 12 when I count by fours? Four, eight, 12. When I count by threes, three, six, nine, 12. Yes, so let's try one twelfths. All right, yep, four twelfths works for a third. Three twelfths works for one fourth. And two twelfths works for one sixth. So, <clears throat> we would have had one third plus one fourth plus one sixth. Now, there's not much we can do with this until we find an equivalent fraction so we can find common denominators. So, one third we can write an equivalent fraction of four twelfths. One fourth we found was three twelfths was 3 twelfths, and 1 sixth was 
two twelfths. Okay, now we can add that all together. Four plus three is seven, plus two more is nine twelfths. So nine twelfths cups, or nine and 12 both have a factor of three. So nine divided by three is three, and 12 divided by three is four. So nine twelfths cups, or three fourths cups of trail mix. Not cups, three fourths cup of trail mix. All right, 14. Write a new problem using different amounts for the ingredients Maya used. Each amount, each amount should be a fraction with the denominator two, three, or four. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's say Maya makes trail mix. We're using the previous problem. By combining, okay, and this is where you have to use these denominators of two, three, or four. So let's say she's going to combine half cup of mixed nuts, a third cup dried fruit, and one fourth cup of chocolate morsels. What is the total amount of ingredients in her trail mix? All right. So we've written a new problem. We didn't say anything about solving it. So let's move on. All right, 15, solve the problem you wrote. Oh, okay. And draw a picture of the fraction strips you use to solve your problem. All right, so let's go back to our problem now. So we have one half plus one third plus one fourth. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this one. And if I was counting by fourths, If I was counted by fourths, we notice that this is going to be bigger than one whole. Okay, so fours, four, eight, twelve. All right, so that that would work. Um, I do have four strips, I do have eight strips, and I do have twelve strips. Threes, three, six, nine, twelve. Two, two, four, six, eight. 10, 12. So the only one that I said when I skipped counting by them, by the denominators, the only one I said the same number over was 12. Okay, so we know 1 fourth is 3 twelfths. We know 1 third is 4 twelfths. And I believe 1 half is the same as 6 twelfths. So let's rewrite that. One half is equal to six twelfths. One third is the same as four twelfths. And one fourth is the same as three twelfths. So if we add those all up, we get 13 twelfths. Well, 12 twelfths is equal to one whole, right? 12 twelfths. Let's, let's put that back up here. So 12 twelfths is equal to one whole, and we had one extra. So 13 twelfths is the same as one and one twelfth. And we can prove that by dividing. 13 divided by 12 is one. One times 12 is 12. Subtract, we're left with one. 
So the quotient is the whole number, the remainder is the numerator, and the divisor is the denominator. So 1 and 1 twelfth. 1 and 1 twelfth. So picture the fraction strips you used to solve your problem. So we used 1 half. plus one-third, plus one-fourth. And then each of those were one-twelfth. which gave us a total of 6 twelfths there. In this one-third, we used 4 twelfths. And one-third, and one-fourth was 3 twelfths. So 6 twelfths plus 4 twelfths plus 13 twelfths gave us 13 twelfths, or 1 and 1 twelfth cups. Explain why you chose the amount you did in your problem. Well, there's no great mystery to that. Um, basically, I chose thirds and fourths because I realized I could use the same denominator using twelfths. All right, so basically when I looked at halves, thirds, and fourths, I realized that I could say that a denominator that would work for both, for all three, two, three, and four would be 12. Because two, three, and four are all factors of 12. All right, 17. <clears throat> Alexandria used a half a cup of grapes and two-thirds cup of strawberries combined to make a fruit snack. How many cups of grapes and strawberries did she use? Use the tiles to complete the fraction strip model to show how you found your answer. The fractions may be used more than once or not at all. Okay, so our first one, that's gonna represent one. We've been using one for all of those, right? And then, I see that this one is exactly in the middle, so that's probably the one half. And then this one's a little bigger than one half because it goes past the one. If this was also one half, it would stop right here. So this is the two thirds. Now we have to find a fraction that would be equal to one half and two thirds. Well, I know fours could work, but there's three boxes. So three-fourths is not a half. How about six? How many sixes would I need to equal half? Well, I think we should know this one. Half of six is three. Okay, so that works for the half. 
and for two thirds, how many sixths do you think think will work for two thirds? Probably four sixths. Yep. So a third is two sixths. Two thirds is four sixths. And what's our answer? Well, one half plus two thirds. One half plus two thirds is the same as three sixths plus four sixths, which is equal to seven sixths. Or one and one sixth. Seven sixths cups or one and one sixth cups. Okay. All right, so that's, that's it for how to use a model to find common denominators for adding. In our next lesson, we're going to use fraction strips again, and we're going to model how to subtract with unlike denominators. So until then, I will see you soon.